And the retaining wall that we're going to look at is a concrete cantilever wall. Uh, with sole behind it. This is the uh, classical retaining wall. It's not the most common retaining wall that geotechnical engineers design, but it's the one that you'll see in all of the uh, uh, introductory textbooks. And so the way that we handle this is we imagine that there is a vertical line going up from the back of the footing. And then we come and isolate this portion, the concrete wall, plus the soil that is over the um, back, uh, back part of the footing. And then we look at a, a free body diagram. And so basically what we're doing with retaining walls is we're remembering back to when we looked at lateral pressure, uh, which involved uh, a K value. And so we look at a, uh, a pressure that is behind the wall, and we can, um, if this wall has a height H, this pressure, if it's the active pressure, would be one half K sub A gamma H squared. And that'll be the lateral pressure that is tending to push this concrete block of, uh, you know, the wall plus the soil that is over the back of the footing. Uh, if I take the uh, forces that are involved, I can say that the, this overall system has got a weight that is acting downward. We've got a horizontal force uh, acting behind the wall. Then we've got a normal force acting on the bottom of the wall. And we have a tangential force acting along the bottom of the wall. And that tangential force is just due to friction. So it's the same thing as in, uh, in static equilibrium. They would give you a, a problem involving a refrigerator with some coefficient of friction at the bottom, and somebody comes along, and the question is, how hard do you need to push it to move it along? And that's the same concern that we have here, but in a different way. <laughs> we would just assume that the wall not move due to the soil pressure. So the whole thing about retaining walls is this simple free body diagram. And so what's going to happen, we're going to look at about four different problems, and it's basically always coming back to this simple free body diagram and some way of describing how those forces interact. So we're always going to be either finding um, force equilibrium or uh, moment equilibrium. And so it's really not geotechnical engineering. It's just uh, how can I use my understanding of geotechnical engineering to describe how the retaining wall will behave. Questions on that? Why do you assume everything is acting on the mass? Well, the mass, I mean, the load is carried up the, up the uh, cable over to the mass. And so this load is carried through the mass, the counterweights are attached to the boom, which is attached to the mass. The weight of the boom, the boom itself is attached to the mass. So the, the mass is what's holding all of these things up here. So that total load is coming down through the mass into the, into the base. And as far as positive or moment uh, or negative moments, I just draw the line so I, it's easy for me to keep track when I'm in a hurry. I guess I still just don't see why you wouldn't take the difference, even though, I mean, I understand it's acting through the mass, but still, if the load's out, if that 90,000 is pulling down, it's trying to pull that mass up out of the, the base. So it's not well, this 90 is giving you one moment here, okay? That's 90 at an angle. It's giving you a moment right there, okay? 
but that 90 pounds is also being <coughs> carried here because it's got to be carried down to the ground. So you've got a moment arm due to that 90. Okay. Think of it this way. What if this was at zero feet? You'd still have the 90 working down here, but you wouldn't have any kind of moment arm due to that 90 sticking out very far. hundred pounds per foot and the per foot is into the page so that's the per linear foot of wall so however long that wall is every foot of that stem weighs 1500 pounds the footing 2400 pounds it's eight feet by two feet so that should be 150 times five six seven eight times two that's how I got that The soil, I used uh, a unit weight of 120, perhaps a little large, but so the 6,000 is that 120 times 5 times 10. So in order for you to calculate these things, they have to give you the unit weights. Of course, we could assume the one for concrete, but they would at least have to give you the unit weight of the soil to get that. So again, that's 120 times 5 times 10. So there's the earth pressure force that's given. There are formulas for it, but now it becomes a geotechnical problem. So that's the earth pressure force. Three thousand pounds. You know, there are formulas for that earth pressure, given uh, the type of soil it is, angle of repose, so forth, okay? friction angle, whatever they call it these days. Okay, so it's three thousand pounds at four feet. Okay, so that three thousand pound force is trying to make that whole assembly slide. So there must be a friction force here resisting that. And we calculate that friction force by just using the coefficient of friction, Coulomb friction. Okay, times the normal force. So you're going to see me calculate that friction force, which is just mu, the coefficient of friction, times that normal force. So it's just like you learned in physics a long time ago in calculating basic friction force. And so I've got 100 feet of cord right here. I've got a degree of curve, and I call that the degree for the railroad. Instead of a, up here, degree for a circular curve for highways, this is degree for a railroad. Many people don't make that distinction and just use capital D for both. But I'm just trying to be clear in nomenclature. And so if I do that, um, the relationship that I get, I really didn't draw the details out to do that is the radius is equal to 50 feet divided by sine of the degree of curve divided by 2. And so that will calculate, if I'm given degree of curve for a railroad, I can calculate its radius and then use that in all my regular simple curve um, formulas. I cannot use the degree of curve in any of my simple curve formulas. So let me go back a page. I want to make this really clear. So where I've got arc length of 100 feet divided, it's really 100 feet divided by, or multiplied by delta divided by degree of circular curve, that d sub c, I cannot substitute in d sub r into this formula because this formula is based on the arc definition for highways and not railroads. All right? So to use this, if I need to use it in some kind of a railroad question, the way to do that is to come over here and 
the, the real challenge would be they would be giving you the degree of curve for the railroad. And that's really, you're being asked to understand what that means. So you come over here to this conversion formula and plug in and calculate the corresponding radius to that degree of railroad curve. Once you have that radius, then you can plug in and you can actually plug in that, here we go, you can plug in that radius into this formula up above and calculate a corresponding circular degree of curve. Now you're on go. You've got the radius, you've got a corresponding circular degree of curve. You can use any formulas that we've taken a look at. Okay, next problem when we go into this uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant is we uh, now have had gone through the flash mixer and we're going into a flocculation tank. And flocculation tanks are simply where we're going to agitate the water very gently with perhaps paddles and encourage these particles to bump into each other. And what happens when, when you have a uh, particle that is grouped together or a bigger particle? It's going to settle faster. So that's a reason that you add these chemicals, alum or polymers. You want to encourage those particles to group together or flocculate and then settle out easier. But with this one, this next process, we've got uh, 4 million gallons per day for our water treatment plant. Depth of the flocculation tank is set. It's 10 feet. We want to know what the minimum dimensions width by length are for this flocculation tank. Right, the, one of the first things we're going to do is to determine the detention time. Right, how long do we want this to be in contact? And from your manual, when you go into the flocculation uh, 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 after or, or item there, you'll see that the detention time needs to be 30 minutes. 